Okay, what is generally considered the worst 3D Mario game? Sunshine. Now, what's generally considered the worst 3D Sonic game? 06. I'm not saying that's my personal opinion, but I am saying that these two games are considered the black sheep of their series, and have way more in common than meets the eye. So today, I figured I'd take a deep dive into what exactly makes these games so similar. I was originally going to compare Adventure 2 to Sunshine as a direct follow-up to my 64 vs Adventure 1 video, but I've got way more to say about this topic, and way too much praise to give Adventure 2. So with that said, sit back, relax, drop the video a like, and let's -a go. Unlike my previous Mario and Sonic video, I have past experience with both of these games. I played Mario Sunshine a ton when I was little, and 06 for the first time this past year. That said, I have a soft spot for Mario Sunshine. It was a defining game of my childhood, but going back to play it nowadays, it doesn't hold up as well as I remember. My experience with Sonic 06 is quite the contrary. Despite never playing it as a kid, it felt so familiar, and I genuinely enjoyed my time with the game. It's been given a hard time by so many critics, but in sitting down and playing it myself, I don't have much to complain about. It feels a lot like I'd expect an Adventure 3 to play, and I've been begging for that game for as long as I can remember. Now, I only mention my personal experience with these games because I want to explain my bias before getting into any real discussion, so you can maybe better see where I'm coming from. So, the main reason I wanted to highlight these games for this particular video is because each one signifies the end of an era for their series. The Super Mario Bros. game started off as linear, 2D platforming games, and the jump to 3D in Super Mario 64 changed that focus to exploration, though platforming was still relevant. Sunshine then took that approach and evolved it to the next console generation, just like Sonic 06 did with the adventure style. Sonic Adventure took the fundamentals of 2D Sonic and perfectly adapted them to fit the third dimension. Unlike Mario, Sonic's original level design philosophy remained consistent throughout the transition. But that's not the point of emphasis, it's the fact that Sonic 06 was the last game to feature that initial 3D style, and remains as such to this day. After that, Sonic Unleashed introduced the new boost style of gameplay that's been featured in the majority of 3D Sonic games since. Besides Lost World, but that's not the adventure style either. While Mario did go back to his 3D roots in Super Mario Odyssey, my point still stands. Sunshine was the last Mario game of that style for 15 freaking years. Galaxy would see a much more linear approach, and each game to follow it took that even farther. These games both made that hardware generational leap for their series, and served as the last of their kind for a very long time. But that begs the question, did these entries cause their gameplay styles to fade away, or is it just a coincidence? Well, in my opinion, they caused it, and it's for the same reason. They both were, and still are, very controversial titles. Super Mario Sunshine is surely the most obscure 3D Mario game to date, and because of that, people tend to either really love it or hate it. Flood's gameplay implementation is either seen as an awesome innovation or a strange gimmick. The small selection of worlds to explore can be seen as a good thing that allowed the devs more time to polish the ones that are there, or as a lack of content. And the huge variety of missions can either make the entire playthrough feel fresh and interesting, or give the game a lack of focus. If I'm being honest, both sides have pretty valid points, and despite the hot and cold nature of this game's reception, I stand somewhere in the middle. I think it's a fun game, but most of that comes from nostalgia, because I prefer my 3D Marios to be more linear and challenge-based. It makes you do a lot of ridiculous crap in the name of progression, and quite frankly, I don't think I have the patience to beat the game nowadays, but I did when I was younger, and because of that, I find a lot of joy in certain aspects. Sonic 06, on the other hand, well, I don't think I even need to explain how controversial it is. The majority of people who didn't grow up with the game absolutely despise it. I'm not one of those people, due to my unconditional love of the adventure style, but there's tons of genuine reasons to both hate the game and think it's one of the worst ever, or love the game and think it's one of Sonic's best. I won't go that far, I'm not trying to die today, but I'm just saying, I can understand the opinion. It's a really solid evolution of the adventure style gameplay, and it builds on the old level designs in some very interesting ways. But, the alternate gameplay styles are annoying and bog down the experience, the two other story modes are nowhere near as fun as Sonic's, and the convoluted, overly dark story just isn't fun to keep up with. Those are just the game's specific reasons though. Potentially the biggest one of them all is something both games struggle with, and that's their abundance of glitches. Sunshine hasn't been harped on for it as much as 06 though, despite both of them having their fair share of unacceptable and game-altering glitches and bugs. The most probable cause of this comes down to optimization. 
Since poor game performance and glitches tend to be grouped together, 06 takes more of a beating, which makes sense, because its performance is terrible. There's load screens everywhere in levels, and they take a long ass time, and that's not even to mention the frequent frame rate drops. Also, the glitches themselves are more harmful to the experience, since they lead to many unnecessary deaths and frustrating game overs. Sunshines can do the same thing, but it's less often, and most of them can be exploited to make the game even more enjoyable. I just find it weird given the plumber's reputation at the time, and even more so nowadays. There's a serious quality standard for every game with that iconic face on it, and Sunshine just seems to be an exception. Also, Sonic's name was already fairly tarnished, so it's weird its issues had a bigger deal made about them. In both cases, the lack of quality assurance comes down to the same thing, a rush development. It's been well documented that Sonic 06 was forced to meet a holiday 2006 deadline that the game simply wouldn't be finished by, but Sunshine's story has slipped a bit more under the radar. Since the PlayStation 2 had a year's head start over the GameCube, Nintendo needed a hit game from their poster boy as soon as possible if they wanted any chance of catching up. They didn't, but hey, retrospectively they had the better console. Don't at me. But beyond that, I think another large reason as to why these two are seen as controversial installments in their series is because of their approach to storytelling, and how it greatly varies from past and future titles. And once again, it's for the same reason. The narratives are way more serious than their series is known for. Sonic 06 is well known for this. I mean, spoiler alert, Sonic dies toward the end, he kisses a human woman, there's time travel, destroyed futures, and nasty Robotniks. It without question has the darkest tone of any Sonic story, and while Mario Sunshine is less extreme, by a lot, it's a Mario plot. There's hardly any competition. Oh Mario, I made a cake for you. You've been framed for graffiti and you've got to clean this island up. I made another cake, hee <laughs> hee. To be fair, Galaxy has a more cinematic and grand feel, but the story's less impactful to the gameplay. It's top and bottom heavy, while Sunshine tells a more compelling story throughout. Also, it's the only game to give Bowser a voice, so checkmate. How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> for all of those reasons, I think these games have way more in common than we give them credit for, if not solely for the impact they had on each series. Contextually, they were the end of an era, they took a more serious approach for their stories, they've been picked apart to death by critics since launch, and they were rushed to come out, which explains the lower quality standard. All of that led to each series taking a step back, reevaluating, and changing how their icon played in 3D. None of the issues I've mentioned so far have much to do with gameplay, but it seems like they took the bad reception as people not liking the gameplay, which is a shame, and I don't think it's true for either game. Most Mario fans will tell you that they like the exploration style games, and Super Mario Odyssey proved that with its high praise and merits. And I strongly believe that the Sonic series would receive similar stature if they went back to their OG 3D gameplay style. I don't see how it wouldn't. The adventure titles and even Sonic 06 are at the age where people that grew up with them are adults now. Adults that are buying games. So I think now more than ever, there's a giant market for that adventure style to come back. Will it? Well, I think Sonic 06 tarnished the name so badly that Sega's too scared to bring it back. But that was 16 years ago. Enough time has passed to try again. I doubt it can be more of a flop than Sonic Forces. Yes, I will take every opportunity I can to shit on Sonic Forces. Okay, so I think I've explained the similarities between Sonic 06 and Mario Sunshine pretty well at this point, but that still begs the question, which one's better? It's obvious, I know, Mario Sunshine is indeed a lot better than Sonic 06. I've tried to think of ways I could argue the other way, but I really can't. Sunshine beats it out in almost every way. The story is much more enjoyable, the gameplay is more polished, and the worlds are more intricate and creatively designed. That's why I didn't want this video to be a versus format like the previous one, because Sunshine is much more refined. But I did want to bring to light how similar these games are in a lot of ways. There is one area in which Sonic 06 absolutely beats out Mario Sunshine though, and that's in terms of replayability, because every level in the game is designed with it in mind. Each stage is littered with shortcuts and alternate routes, which are very rewarding to find and it's so satisfying to whip through a stage and deploy all your knowledge of its layout. And that's not even to mention the ranking system from Sonic Adventure 2 making a comeback, which provides an even bigger reason to play levels over and over again. And in going back, there's a stage select, so you don't have to put up with the hub world, story, or any other nonsense. It cuts right to the action. Also, as I've stated many a time, I prefer a more linear approach to 3D platforming stages. 
I like knowing where I need to go and trying to get there. The act of making tough jumps and pushing game mechanics to their limits is far more enjoyable than walking around a virtual environment. Sunshine's way more on that end of the spectrum, but that's okay because I do enjoy that type of 3D Mario gameplay. But once you've seen everything, there's not much else to do. There are more challenge-based sections in the secret stages, which are a lot more fun and can be quite difficult since you can't use Flood, but these make up a very small fraction of the game, and they aren't all that replayable. To be honest, the only reason I see myself going back to Sunshine would be for nostalgic purposes, just to screw around in Delfino Plaza and listen to that chill tune that brings me back to a simpler time. And speaking of these soundtracks, they're both amazing. Sunshine's selection of calming and blissful tracks is unmatched, but 06 has banger after banger, and I honestly don't think I could pick a favorite. That's beside the point though. While 06 is better to come back to, I think Sunshine is way more enjoyable that first time through. Plus, exploring every corner of this tropical paradise is kind of a must for any Mario fan, while 06 is just a little bonus if you really can't get enough Sonic Adventure. That's just my take though. I'd love to know your thoughts on these games and the Sonic v Mario debate as a whole down in the comments. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss another video like this. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and please, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you later.